Today on X-Play, we review the worst games of the year. Prepare yourself for glitches, gratuitous nudity, and one very bad kitty cat. Buckle your seatbelts, cause this is gonna suck. It's game time. Doesn't get worse than this. It's Adam Tesler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X Play's second annual Golden Mullet Awards. Today we shine a bright, unforgiving light on the worst games of 2004. The mullet. It's the crappiest of hairstyles, so it's only fitting that we present it to the crappiest of games. And today, whether you call it a short long, a Mississippi mud flap, or a Kentucky waterfall, we have games that have richly earned the mullet stigma by making us hate gaming. From an action game based on a horrible movie. To a trivia game filled with naked women. To a platformer in which a man shoots a laser beam from his groinal region. We've gathered together the cream of the crap. And to kick things off, we bring you a game that answers one simple question. What happens when everything that can go wrong does go wrong? The answer, Drake of the 99 Dragons. Many people ask, is Drake of the 99 Dragons based on an existing comic book? No, it's not. But if it were, that comic would suck. Oh, what was that? Okay, where do I begin? Intruders this is Drake. His skin pallor resembles moldy plasticine. He disfigured Jay Leno when he stole his chin, and his mouth is perpetually open as if he's as shocked as we are at how utterly crappy this game is. But he sure believes in himself. Nothing can stop me now. Drake is part of the clan of the 99 Master, dragons, except someone killed the other 98. This can't be. And he's kind of immortal or something. Drink, and you'll be strong. That's the key to immortality? The taste, bitter and sweet. Honestly, I don't know what's going on here. Do not fear. You can hear, but are unable to move. The time has come. What is clear is that Drake holds a gun in each hand and runs around shooting at things willy-nilly. The tutorial teaches combat as running away in a circle while mashing on buttons. You're such a badass. This running and gunning is aided by auto-aiming. But not really, because it doesn't work. What you get is Drake chaotically throwing his arms every which way like a some homicidal semaphore session. Nothing can stop me now. Look at this. Am I hitting anything? What, what's going on? In case you've recently gouged out your eyes and are just listening to the show, this game controls horribly. Running up the stairs is an effort. Running is an effort. The capper of this melange of mind-bogglingly bad decision-making is that depressing the left control stick slows time. You will slow time a lot by accident as you frantically attempt to make the controls work. Though it is useful for gunning down small Chinese ones. Nothing can stop me now. And then there's the camera. You get the sense the camera's constantly looking for a better game to depict, because it's not interested in you. Before it slips my mind, let me mention the graphics. At first, they seem interesting. Then you realize they're not. Drake himself shifts from animation to animation so abruptly, I thought I was having a seizure. Then I realized it was my brain trying to shut down because it couldn't withstand the massive suck emanating from this game. So yeah, pretty much there's no reason to buy this game. No reason to rent this game. No reason to say any more about this game. But I have some time to kill. <laughs> One out of five. Nothing can stop me now. Shut up. We stopped you. Why? Why make a game in which a man's arms flail wildly like an air traffic controller attacked by bees? Well, sometimes Adam flails wildly, but only because he's trying to get away from games that are this terrible. Drake of the 99 Dragons, this golden mullet is for you. Of course, badness doesn't just plague the bigger consoles. Sometimes it strikes the smallest and most innocent among us. The Game Boy. Sure, it's hard to imagine cramming a boatload of suckiness into one tiny handheld, but the folks behind Advanced Guardian Heroes managed to do just that. Here's our review. 
Advance Guardian Heroes is a game so devoid of anything good that one has to make up new words to express how crap it is. Like horrendous gust dating, baka kakalaka, or scrotagonal. If you're not looking for an excuse to smash your precious portable plaything, a few minutes with this game might convince you to hop on the next plane to Japan to punch each and every programmer in the eye. A follow-up to a 1996 Saturn title, Advanced whatever it's called, is a wreck. It has something to do with Soul of Hero, some zombie who helped defeat the chaos, uh, a bunch of souls. You must be Soul of Hero from another world. Let's fight! Before you figure out much more, you'll probably take the game out and bury it. This simplistic graphics say, kids game from a couple years ago. The maddeningly difficult gameplay, even set on easy, says kids on Ritalin. The counter-laden combat drains all fun out of even reliable beat-em-ups. Let's crush him with the forbidden ancient spell with difficult counter timing. And the English translations are so atrocious, even the freaking tutorial is too hard. If you can't run homing moon, that can be launched stopping anything in the air. Even if you defeat me, you will come with me to the hells. What will you do? How about quit playing? Every time you die, which will be often, you'll have to choose between continuing from the last checkpoint or trading your soul for devil mode, invincibility, and unlimited magic for six minutes. But then you die and the game is over. No continues. Now the vexatious soul of hero will completely vanish. Thank you. Vexatious? I wish this game would vanish. The only value of this feature is that it lets you play long enough to realize you don't want to play ever again. Huh? You've got to be kidding me. No, dead serious. This game is junk. It isn't worth your time or money. We give it a begrudging one out of five. Hey, Advanced Guardian Heroes, why is that superhero at the beginning of the review shooting a laser out of his crotch? This isn't Joe and Nikki. Why? Because he can. And for that, we award Advanced Guardian Heroes the Golden Mullet. Coming up, a game so bad, we're embarrassed to even show it to you. And they are off. Once again, your hostess with the mostest, Morgan Webb. Oh, ah, that Sessler guy. Welcome back to x -Lay's Golden Mullet Awards. Every year, we give the worst games of the year an award modeled after the worst haircut of all time, the mullet. But today, we present it proudly to games that have gone below and beyond our lowest expectations. Games so awful that their programmers deserve to be punished by playing their own games for eternity. Games like this one. Stepping up to the plate now, we have a double team, Melissa and Amber. Yes, for those too young to buy proper pornography, there's a gaggle of bouncing, flashing, tittering twits just waiting to titillate in the guy game. <laughs> no, they're not interested in you. They're interested in the engulfing black eye of the camera lens, this being the only time they rise above the double wide to greater fame and fortune. If by fortune you mean a free shot and the freer molestation of the crowd. Are you pretty smart? Absolutely not. But fame and fortune will surely come their way as they embark on their promising Jeopardy careers. The question is, what animal produces the largest eggs? Oh, ostrich eggs are really big. Dinosaur eggs are really big. Uh, elephant eggs are really big. Okay, so Ken Jennings is probably safe. Though the men don't exactly come off like geniuses either. Do you have a band-aid? Because I fell, I, fell, I fell and scraped my knee when I fell in love with you. Ooh. How many times have you been lied? Oh, uh, 14 times, dude. Like, it's no thing. It's six times. Like, it's no idea. There's four basic rounds. In the first, you answer trivia yourself. Then you can earn bonus points by guessing if these bouncing bubbles will pull the right answer out of their cirrhosis-inflicted brains. If they get it right, well, then they're off the hook for this round. You got away from me. You got away from me. I tried to make him difficult, guys. I didn't mean to do that to you. If they get it wrong, then off with the much-needed pink glitter bandos. Three! The more bonus points you get, the more uncensored the rewards. But that doesn't matter here, because for the sake of Colin Powell's nepotistic progeny, we can't show the naughty to the kitties. In the second round, you participate in some sort of ball-oriented activity. 
In the third round, it's back to trivia for you and the ladies. You can earn more bonus points by figuring out which of the dumb answers they actually came up with. Unrestricted legion. <laughs> it's pretty safe to go for the absolutely dumbest answer of them all. What is the capital of Wisconsin? Hmm, well, I'm gonna go with I don't bleeping know. Then, in the fourth round, you pick which lady will successfully complete a challenge, the primary goal of which is to make them jump up and down. They get extra points for going topless. Wow, extra points? How could they resist? If you win, you get a strip show. You can tell these ladies are paid for their services because they don't jiggle. So it's basically not a video game. It's Trivial Pursuit with boobs. So if you think Girls Gone Wild is the best thing ever, then you'll like this game. For everyone else on the planet, the guy game gets a one out of five. I'll do my best not to give you a hard one. By the way, who is this tool? Why is he talking? Why is he so short? And to think, for the same amount of money it cost to buy the guy game, gamers could have bought lunch at Hooters. Hey, guy game, for combining all the gameplay with stupid drunken people, you more than earned this golden mullet. And you also ensured that most of the people playing your product actually have a mullet. Way to go. Up next, proof that not just the Catwoman movie sucked. Trust me, you'll need kitty litter after this one. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Come on, come on. Welcome come on, back son. to X Play's second annual Golden Mullet Awards. Yes, once again, we're giving the worst games of the year all the recognition they deserve. But this year, one game earned the dubious distinction of being one of the year's worst games based on one of the year's worst movies. Here's our Golden Mullet approved review of Catwoman. Okay, let's cut to the chase. Is it possible that the Catwoman game could be worse than the Catwoman movie? Do you want to play my game? I mean, this looks really cool, right? <gasps> Just like Prince of Persia. If Prince of Persia sucked. We all knew that someday EA would release a bad game. It was inevitable. And Catwoman is that game. You're in for a whole world of hurt. Yes, like a cat box full of clumpy kitty litter, Catwoman just keeps serving up feline fecal matter. Where do I begin? Is the stupid cat costume? The one that's supposed to make us think fighting crime in open-toed heels is a good idea? Or with the repetitive gameplay, which finds Catwoman either swinging around a pole or kicking men into trash cans or barrels or car trunks? Or how about the Oscar-caliber voice acting? I am Catwoman. Nah, let's start with this. The worst cutscene in the history of superhero games, which shows Academy Award winner Halle Berry making out with a cat. Um, is anyone else creeped out by this? But Adam, you whine. Isn't there something redeemable about the gameplay? Well, yes, there is. Because in a shockingly innovative move, EA has created a game where you can smash crates and make barrels explode. Plus, Catwoman gets to go on exciting missions, like this one. Look for Midnight Scent Trail. Wait, don't scent trails occur when animals shoot musk out of their... Never mind. Then again, if sniffing hormones isn't your thing, you could always commit a burglary in a Euro Trash dance club, because people hide their good jewelry behind the strobe lights. Hey, who do I have to whip to get a drink in this place? Of course, Catwoman doesn't always follow scent trails. Sometimes she fights things like defenseless trash bins. But what she really loves is getting punched in the back of the head. The analog controls are so imprecise, you'll spend most of the game getting tagged in the cranium or flailing your whip in the wrong direction. Or you could just run around like a tool. That's what I did. It's like breakdancing, only worse. And don't get me started on the bad camera angles. Where am I going? Why is my head missing? How long before I throw up? Oh, stop spinning, please. Of course, there are redeemable things about this game. The graphics, for one, are beautiful. And if you set down your controller and wait a while, an incredibly creepy cutscene of Halle Berry licking herself will start, which means that this is one of the only games that's more fun when you're not actually playing it. And that's why we at X-Play can only cough up a two 
out of five. The fact that this varnished turd of an action title came to us from EA, the developers behind innumerable great games, leaves us scratching our mullet-clad heads. EA, we know you were just taking a paycheck on this one, but did you have to make it so bad? We have a modest proposal. Let's take back Halle Berry's Academy Award and replace it with this golden mullet. Because, girl, you sure earned it. Yeah. Up next, we scrape the bottom of the barrel, and oh man, is it nasty. <laughs> Nothing you have seen before can prepare you for Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play's Golden Mullet Awards. Today we singled out the worst games of 2004 and presented them with the little trophy that reeks of shame and failure, the Golden Mullet. But now, we look deeper at games that are so bad they are the lowest points in this entire console cycle. Tremble in their presence. to games you should never buy. Great job, where we save you cash by pointing out what's truly deplorable and intolerable in the world of video games. First up is Barbie Horse Adventures. Most would likely pass this one up based on the title alone, but we're here to warn the little girls out there who might be ensnared by its barn-infested charm. You play as Barbie who goes on a summer vacation to a horse ranch with her politically correct pal. Look out, nature. Here we come. Yeah, look out for these litter-strewing suburbanites. Welcome back, girl. As luck would have it, the horses escape the very day Barbie shows up, and it's up to Barbie to rescue them. And Barbie just loves horses. You're a good girl. You're such a good horse. Good girl. As you might expect, you can change Barbie's outfits. Press the A button to choose a different jacket. Now Barbie's found the ultimate accessory. Let's make our horse look extra special. What, no horse blankets to match Barbie's gear? For shame. You can even change the horse's tail for whatever reason. I wonder how long that tail will stay white. Our horse is getting really dirty. We better wash her off. During your trials, you'll come across dangerous creatures like this lightning quick porcupine. We need to time our run past the porcupine. And all horses like skunks. We're almost out of trust on the friendship meter. Run away, Barbie! Run away from the dangerous skunk! Oh! The rest of the game consists of Barbie collecting coins, opening chests, and using her cell phone in the woods. Christy, Barbie here. But she's a tough old broad. It's no wonder most girls don't like video games with threat like this being pushed on them. Straight from the bad idea file comes Monster Garage. If you watch any amount of television, your chances of avoiding Jesse James, the gearhead behind the show, aren't good. The game takes actual challenges from the show and asks you to complete them which means transforming vehicles into crazy contraptions. This week's challenge, take a 1968 Ford Bronco and turn it into a 1968 Ford Bronco. As popular as the show is, this game isn't going to make any new fans. You begin by buying parts. Everyone knows how men love to shop. Once you have the parts, you can enlist the services of all-star wrench monkey to do some of the dirty work. But you have to do a lot of it yourself. Who needs Ninja Guy Den when you can unscrew bolts in Monster Garage? Things get really interesting when you're asked to remove body panels. And the excitement becomes uncontrollable when you get to weld. Sorry, Monster Garage. The only people interested in this game will be too busy working on real cars. Last, and most certainly least, is Big Rig's Over the Road Racing. Yeehaw! Hands down, this is the worst video game to ever be released. Really? It's supposed to be a racing game, but you don't really race anyone. Oh, your competitor is there at the starting gate, but he's not going anywhere. At least you're sure to win the race every time. Yes, I are winner. Objects in the way? No worries, you can drive right through them. Why bother crossing a bridge when you can fall right through it? Tired of following the beaten path? Why not just leave the game world altogether? At least you can come back. The box says to get ready for CB talk and convoy roll in action. But there's no CB, or any sound for that matter. And the last time we checked, one rig does not equal a convoy. So 
there you have it. Games so bad we can't review them because our rating scale doesn't have a zero. Don't say we didn't warn you. On January 1st, we're showing an X-Play marathon. Yes, X-Play all day. I'm so sorry. So go online now to vote for the episodes you want to see. G4TechTV.com slash X-Play. Goodbye. Goodbye. Malik.